reason 1048 as to why I can never be Christian again. More contradictions. So in the Paulinian letter of, of Rome, uh, that y'all call Romans, he states that by faith alone, you are saved and can enter into heaven. But then when you read in the book of James, it tells you that it is by your works that faith without yeah, if your faith you can have all the faith in the world but if there's no works that indicate that that indicate your faith in that faith is dead so by faith alone you cannot get into heaven it is also by your works and i know you christians y'all love to just quote the romans part because you don't want to have to live and do the work and although some of you may look at it and say well oh there he goes again taking it out of context because context is our you know, that's our thing. That's how we can just take away from everything he's saying when really all you have is um, a bias. You have, um, I forgot what it's actually called, but it is when you have made the decision upon something and then you have bias towards it. So I'm just going to call it conscientious bias, right? You have your little conscientious bias. That's not the actual term, but when you, you, you will, you will do your bias simply because you will say that, oh, context, context, context when rome when the, the letter was written to the romans and the other letter in james was written to another church and the reason why those letters say the different things is simply because they were written in a way so that these churches had a specific problem that they had going on so it was for that church and in james it was for that church so but if you do that and you accept that then what you're saying is that your bible is not valid for us today that either neither one of those two uh, scriptures, as you call them, are valid for today if they were written for a specific person. Uh, for instance, I got a call from the VA today. They called to make an appointment. That appointment was for me. Although my brother goes to the VA, that, my, that, that call was for me, not for him. So it's not valid for you. And that's the same process. If it was for this church and this letter was for that church, then it's not for everybody else. So you cannot actually use that. And you have to, well, you don't have to, but because your conscientious bias says that, nah, I'm going to still separate it and be able to negotiate it to fit my mentality because I need this to have one voice. I need this to still be the same thing. But the truth of the matter is, it's a contradiction in the teachings of your Bible. And you have many of those contradictions because you have different authors writing at different times, writing to different people under different cultural norms, and they have written your book to fit those cultural, cultural norms. And when I look at today, my culture doesn't fit the culture of 2,000 years ago. Your culture doesn't fit the culture of 2,000 years ago. So therefore, the majority of the information in your book does not fit who we are today so therefore, it invalidates the information in itself, and there is no need for it. Now, if I did have to pick one over the other, then I would pick the James Version because people talk a lot. But what they do indicates what they really believe. Where you spend your time indicates where you really believe. Where you spend your money shows what you really believe. Those are the things. Your works are way more important than your word. So all the Christians who stand on john three sixteen, you stand on it all day but this is why your jesus say that in matthew that hey y'all gonna be calling my name but i don't know y'all i don't know you bro who are you he's not gonna know you right if it was true it's not true but he's not gonna know you based on your book because you haven't displayed that you actually believe in what you claim and if you claim the whole bible then you are not acting accordingly to that book. So therefore, these types of contradictions are 1,048 of why I can never, ever, ever go back to being a Christian, go back to being a deacon, go back to being an associate pastor, as they tried to call me, but I rejected that title. Uh, but I could never go back to that because those contradictions, you know, they'll be in my brain. And, and, and how can you expect me not to analyze it you, this God supposedly gave me this brain, gave me this free will, and you expect me not to analyze this information that you have and then see all that is messed up about it, all the contradictions. And that is why we walk away from this book and this religion, why we walk away from the, even the 
idea of having a relationship with a fictitious being that never existed as far as the biblical version of a Yeshua never existed. So, you know, and you want me to worship it? Nah, I'm good. You see, any deity that is the creator of the universe would not require my worship. Any deity that gave me free will would not require my worship. There wouldn't be a, you know, if then statement. If you love me, then you get heaven. If you don't love me, then you get hell. That wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, a, and, and let me clarify, if then ultimatum actually, instead of just an if then statement. Rather, it would be, hey, I gave you free will. I gave you in nature the opportunity to understand how you should live your life and by your works, we'll be able to demonstrate that. You'll be, we'll be, you'll be able to demonstrate it and then it could see that, but there is no judgment to put you into some hell if you choose that that's not where you want to be. If you choose that you want to uh, live a great life but not worship me, that's cool. Go, go to the next existence, keep being a great being. That would be the only thing it would be concerned about. Well, it wouldn't be concerned about nothing. It just would exist and let us exist as we choose to exist. And that doesn't mean that we exist without morals, that we exist without love, that we exist without any, um, you know, ingenuity or, any, or nothing like that. It just means that we are given an innate thing in us of choosing whether we're going to be A or we're going to be B. But that deity is not saying, if you choose B, I'm going to send you to hell. Because then that's not a choice at all. That's an ultimatum. And that's a fear tag. And why would some deity that's supposed to be the creator of the universe be able to be pushed by its desires to have you love it or be with it? It don't give a shit about whether you're with it or not with it. Because you're with it no matter where you are. You're with it no matter where you are. And that's an understanding of the all. That the all is in all, but all is not the all. You cannot escape the presence of the all by going to hell. Because the all, because even hell would be within the all and not outside of the all. Because if anything is outside of your creator, then your creator is not the creator. So therefore, your God, is also your devil. Your heaven is also your hell. Think you teeth into that one for a few minutes. Y'all have a great day. And remember always, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.